means and standard deviations part two so what we're going to do in this one is just look at a couple more examples uh, from what we did in the first part and we're going to use the template that i've created for us again uh, one thing i want to note is that i did make some changes to the ordering of the template so now in the template what you'll see is that uh, the first thing that comes up is this is the template you want to use if given probabilities and below that is template if given frequencies. The reason I switch these is we oftentimes either have or can find the probabilities. It's much less common that we use the frequencies. So I just wanted this one to be a little bit more accessible. I also added in a couple extra rows just in case we need those. So um, everything as far as how this functions should be exactly the same. Um, I also just highlighted stuff in blue. So this is the stuff you'll enter. The stuff in yellow will be the outputs that we're particularly interested in. Okay, so first example, we got a casino game. Uh, you're gonna pay $10 to play, and you're gonna roll a six-sided die just one time. So apparently it's a very, very simple casino game. Uh, the casino, of course, keeps your, your oops, not $3, $10. Keeps your $10, but pays you back twice the number of dollars that you roll. So for example, if you roll a six, you're gonna get $12. If you roll a five, you're gonna get $10. You're gonna Sorry, six, twelve dollars, five, ten dollars, four, eight dollars, and so on. So, what is your average loss per bet? And it's framed this way because uh, it's trying to tell you you should have a negative expected value or a negative mean. So, there's a couple ways we can go about doing this. Um, one thing we should note is that all probabilities, right, are going to be one sixth. So, since it's a six-sided die, we're going to say, okay, all probabilities. are one out of six, All right? That's something that we're gonna need when we go over to the template. So uh, the other part of this, again, make sure that we're, we're keeping in mind that whatever you roll, you're gonna get back twice that number of dollars. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this, right? Our, um, our probabilities, we already said these are one sixth, and I can just copy this down. So there are going to be six different outcomes here. So one sixth all the way through. And then we say, okay, what are our different data points? Well, I don't wanna have one, two, three, four, five, six, because those are the outcomes on the die, but uh, we are going to earn twice that, right? We're gonna get twice that amount back. So if I roll a one, I'm really getting two bucks. If I roll a two, I'm getting four bucks, and then six bucks, eight bucks, 10 and 12. Okay, <clears throat> so from here, if we did it this way, we would say, oh, I actually have a positive value that's coming out of here. So my expected value, which is mu, or my average mu, right, that's positive. So if we did it this way, we'd say, oh, I think actually I'm gonna get seven bucks. Now here's the thing, uh, this says average loss. I should be losing money. So where is the missing Money, where does where this go from a, a gain to a loss? Well, we had to pay $10 to play, right? So if on average you pay $10 and win $7, well, okay, I guess you net, right? What do you, what do you net? The net just means like when everything comes out in the wash, when you've accounted for what you've paid and what you've gotten back, right? Then this would be the $7 minus the ten dollars right so you gave them ten they're gonna give you seven back you're still out three dollars right so this is a three dollar loss now the, another way to compensate for this is to include that in your data points so if you want to consider getting two bucks really like being oh yeah I lost eight dollars right so if you get two dollars back but you had to pay ten then you could, and you could calculate these. You don't need to do these in your head. You could say, well, uh, this is equal to two minus the 10 that I paid to play, All right? This one is equal to four minus the 10 that I paid to play. So you could go through and um, calculate each of these in this way if that's a little bit easier for you, or you can, if you know, if you can kind of do this in your head, that's fine too. So if you pay $8, or sorry, if you, you win $8, but you paid 10, that means overall you lost two. Um, if you paid 10 and win 10, you break even, so zero. And then if you win 12, but you had to pay 10, then, then you're up two bucks. 
oh, look at that. Here's our negative three, right? So this this actually, if we account for the cost to, to play in these data points, then we don't have to adjust later on with our uh, with our mean or our average here. So just kind of be mindful when you're calculating these data points, like did I already account for how much I had to pay to play or not, right? At some point, we've got to account for it. We don't want to account for it twice either, so make sure it's only accounted for one time. So there we go, three bucks or a $3 loss, right? Negative three. Cool, that one's pretty straightforward, right? All the probabilities were easy enough to find and, and the outcomes are pretty easy. So let's take a look at the next part. An American roulette wheel has 38 slots. Um, you've probably seen this. If you haven't ever been in a casino, you've, you've certainly seen this in a movie. Uh, this is just a big wheel. It's got red and black numbers that a little ball is going to fall into. And then it has these other two numbers, zero and double zero. Those are typically colored green. Those are uh, green is not a good thing. <laughs> Those are usually considered like house numbers. You can play them. Um, but they're basically uh, put in to shift the odds in the casino's favor. So you always get paid back as though there are only 36 slots. However, there are 38 slots. And that's how casinos make their money, right? They just have a, a small difference in between the payouts and the theoretical probabilities. So the ball is equally likely to come to rest in any of these 38 slots. And uh, the slot numbers are laid out on a board in, in a certain way. Um, so the rows are going to look like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, et cetera, all the way down to the last row is 30, uh, 34 through 36. Um, zero and double zero are not in any of these rows. These are usually at the top, sort of in their own row. Um, you can bet it, but we're going to, to kind of treat that as, as a separate thing. So we're going to ignore that for the moment. Um, not ignore it in the probabilities, but ignore it just as a possible uh, bet to make. So <clears throat> we're going to suppose somebody places $10 on a row bet, meaning they're choosing one of these rows. So maybe they're choosing, you know, this, the row with seven, eight, nine or something like that. So we don't really care which one. We're just saying they're placing a single $10 bet on one of these rows. Um, it's going to pay out $120 if any of those numbers come up. So if seven, eight, or nine is the number that the ball lands in, then you're going to get 120 bucks. But just like last time, keep in mind, you had to pay $10 to play. So that is something that we need to consider here. So that's exactly what's happening in part A. Part A says, what is the probability model for this scenario? Okay, well, we have some different outcomes, right? Um, we can either uh, win or lose. Okay, well, what, is that, what does that look like? Well, we either win $120 or we lose, meaning we get $0. But this is just accounting for, right? If it spins and, and it doesn't land on your number, okay, you just lost, but hey, wait a minute, we paid $10 to play. So if this says take into account the $10 that, that was uh, used to play. So this is basically just like, here's our winnings, um, but we also have our net amount, right? So if I, won $120, but I paid $10 to play, this goes down, right? Really what I netted was 110. So that's how much I'm walking away with. Um, if I don't win, if I don't land on, on the numbers that I wanted, uh, it's not just that I get $0, I had to pay that $10 to play. So we would be out $10, right? Negative $10. So we have uh, kind of like a, a little table that we're setting up here, but any good probability model needs to have Shockingly, probabilities. So let's look at the probabilities here. Probability, okay. So uh, what's the probability we win? Well, if I place a single row bet, that means I'm, I'm banking on three numbers. As my example, I said, oh, let's, what if we bet on the seven, eight, nine row? So there are three ways for me to win. One of those three numbers has to get hit out of the 38 numbers total, right? One through 36 and then zero and double zero. All of the other ways, so all 35 out of 38 ways, all remaining 35 ways, are I'm going to lose my $10 bet. So what is the probability model? The probability model is actually this. What are we walking away with, right? We're either walking away with 110 or we're walking away out $10. So what is the expected value for the game? Okay, let's go over to our template. 
Again, this is part of the reason I had the probabilities up top here. So I'm just going to delete those values. Everything should zero back out. So I have either $110 winning that happens equals three out of 38, right? And this comes up as zero. You can always change the number type. So if you wanna, right now it's on fraction, but my guess is, yep, it's a single digit. So if I wanted to change that so it shows up properly, no problem. Um, the alternative is I'm out 10 bucks, right? What is this gonna happen with probability of 35 out of 38? Again, it's gonna round to the nearest whole number uh, because my number had two digits. There we go. So you can fix it if you want, but if you don't fix it, so actually, let me show you what happened. So if I didn't change that number format, this says one in the cell, but if you go up to the formula bar, it's actually gonna read it correctly, 35 out of 38. So it's not changing your values, it's just changing how they look. Uh, but I don't really like that. I wanna make sure I'm seeing everything in its fullest form. So okay, this is a very simple thing. You either win or you don't. Right, those are the only two possible outcomes. And this says, we expect to lose. That should be the case for basically any casino game, right? Unless it is a flawed game, in which case, go play that thing. Um, but any of the time that we play this, we should be expecting, on average, to lose, right? You might, you might hit a lucky streak, you might win even just the one time and feel good about it, but on average, you should expect to lose. So expected value or average loss or mean, those are all kind of the same thing. So expected value, well, what's the expected value? It is negative 53 cents, all right? So we're gonna do dollar sign and then 0.53. So 0.5263, whatever, that's, that's just round to the nearest cent. So we're gonna be out negative 53 cents. Now, had I forgotten about this, right? What if I said, oh, my only options are 120 and zero, right? I win 120 or I just don't win. Um, okay, we would get this value, 9.473, whatever. Okay, if I forgot to account for the $10 here and I wanted to later, guess what? I could just do, well, that's what I expected to win, but I had to play, pay $10, so minus 10. Oh, look at that. I'm back at that same value we got. So whether we do it in the calculation to begin with or at the end, we should get the same value. Um, and it turns out the standard deviation, so I'm gonna write this number down. This is right if we if we forgot, whoops, we forgot about the $10. Our standard deviation reads out as 32.3588. I'm gonna go to like four decimal places. Just, you know, usually we wanna go out to a handful of decimal places here. Okay, let's see if that changes based on what I have here. So if I, if I did this correctly, I was supposed to account for the $10. So 110, negative 10. Oh, look at that. 32.5388, oh yeah, okay, cool. So it turns out that the standard deviation is not going to change whether I account for my $10 to play beforehand or afterward. So that's a good thing. All right, and those are the two examples. I hope those are helpful.